Okay, so I hope that everybody um, feels like now you have some experience in thinking about what are ingredients um, and, and addressing uh, or noticing some areas where it's gray, right? It's, it's not as clear. Um, so I tried to put up some themes that came up. Generally, we're going to have resources that last for multiple years. So we'll talk about that some tomorrow, like how we handle that, um, how we adjust either the quantity or the price to reflect what's used, the fact that the resource will last for longer than the time that we're using it. Um, we also might have multi-year interventions, okay? So where it's not just in and out in six weeks, we might have something where we're treating students, the same students for three years, or maybe it's a three-year program where we see different students every year. All right, so we want to think about about that as we move into tomorrow when we're starting to think about calculating costs, pricing. So we'll think about you know, how we think about both a resource that lasts for longer than what we're using it for and an intervention that lasts for longer than a year. So now there are issues with training where training can be tricky, especially if training is the intervention, right? So here what we want to think about what's going to drive an answer nearly all of this is again what was our what was the the main sentence that I said you guys have to keep in your heads yes right so if there is some component that goes into delivering this program that helps to generate that impact Right? And if we were going to take that somewhere else and replicate that impact that we got somewhere else, right? if we wanted to replicate it, what would we need to do that? We would need to train those trainers. Right? We'd need to hire those trainers. We might need to oversee those trainers, have a place where they come in and they problem solve, they work together. Right? So there might be that kind of component. Um, as far as administration and development goes, generally those are sunk costs. Right? So the program exists. We are testing an implementation of the program. We are not testing the person who developed or wrote or published the books that we're using in the reading curriculum. We're just using the books. Okay? And so there's a line there generally between the development of a program and the administration of a program and the implementation of the program that we would replicate or what goes into generating that impact. But sometimes there are people who work at the program who oversee implementation. Now that would be something that goes into implementation. That would be something that we would count. Research costs. Tricky, right? So, you know, my statistician's time taking the Woodcock-Johnson results and trying to estimate differences in, you know, trying to estimate our impacts, trying to think about heterogeneity in those impacts, I'm not going to put his time as a cost for implementation. He never set foot in a school. He never talked to a teacher. He didn't work with the program really, right? So his time is not, it's clearly not at a cost for implementation. However, if I go in and I observe the teachers, and every time I observe a teacher, a teacher says, how did I do? I said, oh, you did really great, you know, but I did notice in your guided reading time, you had this one group over here, they were really behind, you might want to re-level them. Now I'm a part of implementation, especially if I'm there really frequently. So there can be a situation where you set up like an evaluation environment, where you've got researchers in there all the time, everybody's kind of on point, like fidelity is really high, we're making sure, and in that case you might want to consider including some of those researchers' time because they made the implementation happen a certain way. Now again, this is where sensitivity tests can come in and be really handy. If you think that, well, we had a team of researchers go in eight times over the course of the year and you know, we think that they gave some feedback, but we don't think that it really had anything to do with the impact, then you could have one estimate where you include their time and one estimate where you don't. So you would think through how you, how you include those. And then again, that's where transparency is really very key. Um, student time. So as I mentioned earlier, you might have like a buddy program 
Um, I feel like all of my work these days is just tied to reading, so so many of my examples are related to reading, so I apologize. I have done more than reading, but right now it's like that's all I can think about. Um, you might have a buddy system. So like let's say we're working with kindergartners, you have a fifth grader that comes in and sits down with your kindergartner and reads 20 minutes every week. So then that, that fifth grader time, that might be a resource that you count as something that happened to make implementation happen, but there may not be a cost for that time. There may not be like a dollar value that you place on that time. However, if that's a college student, or if that's a parent, or if that's someone that has lost wages, then that's when we get really serious about valuing that time with a, with a dollar value. Uh, transfers and fees. So um, for a program, okay, let's mix it up. For um, an after school math tutoring program, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, let's say that the school has to pay uh, $10,000 to have that program come in. So that school is financing the costs that are borne by that program. So that's a transfer. So we'll account for that transfer after we account for all of the ingredients of the program. So this will be more clear tomorrow when we work through an example. We'll work through an example in the morning about design and then we'll re-hit that same example in the afternoon when we think about analyses. Um, but you may also have uh, college students who have to pay fees for their courses, right? So there's time, there's wages that they're losing, but then there's a fee that they're paying. So we just want to be careful not to double count. And you count fees as a transfer after you count for the ingredients of an intervention. Can yeah. I ask a quick question about the research cost. What if like, part of the implementation of the program is dependent on you reporting back like, to a granting agency or something like that? So, I mean, like, like, give me more. So for example, like in the GEAR program, part of okay. receiving the funding continually year after year that you have to report back to the granting agency? Concretely, summer program mm -hmm. um, research assistant has to spend time documenting exactly how many kids show up for the interventions that are being implemented um, because their time spent in the program we believe is connected to achieving outcomes. Absolutely. So the person on staff who's documenting that time is a, is a personnel. So then this is where, um, so I mentioned earlier, sometimes I use subcategories. So under personnel, I would have um, like gear up staff, and then you might have school staff time. Um, you might have uh, like former alum time who come back to do some coaching or help with college trips or what have you. Um, you might have people in the community who come and give talks at like a career fair. So you can, you can start to think about um, these like different clusters to make sure that you don't miss anything. But I mean, it does still seem like a, a little bit of a murky area because it, you're gonna have some data tracking that might be linked to effects, outcomes. Mm -hmm. And then you have some tracking that might not be related to driving outcomes that is only required for reporting back to the funder. Yep. Right. So some um, of those activities you maybe should be included and maybe some of that time and that, some of those activities shouldn't be. So this is tricky um, because you're thinking about a federally funded program um, and so you would want to be really transparent about what you're including and why. And if you have administrative costs that are funded by the federal dollar that you're not including, you would just want to be really careful in how you report that and how you talk about what you are including and what you're not including, um, what administrative costs are funded in the federal budget outlay. So when they say gear up or so like talent search. So I did some work on talent search. Um, Talent Search is a similar, it's a TRIO program, it's a federally funded program. It looks at um, getting kids to graduate from high school and enroll into post-secondary. In that program, um, you'll hear it's $400 a student because that's how the program is funded. $400 a student per student every year on average. But then when you dig in, we're talking about much different numbers because we're talking about the actual implementation and the staff that go into to serving the students, 
and then attaching those to an outcome. But then we have to be really careful about not only the distinction between federal funding at $400 per student, but then also the larger federal funding that goes into the program overall, right? So from like the Department of Education level, the amount of funds that are going into TRIO, and then how that's being split up amongst their programs. Um, so I would think really carefully about that and about how those data, could those data exist with only half that person's time or is it just that we're using those data twice so that that person can report back to the federal government and that person's data can be used to run the program. Okay, some quick takeaways um, as we transition into a break. Again, we want to think about cost of treatment and control. Generally, we try to follow the ingredients method for both. We'll carefully consider any induced services that maybe mediate our outcome. Okay, so it might look something like this. You might have a situation where your treatment directly impacts your outcome, but you might have a situation where your treatment is changing services. And those services are also, they're mediating your outcome. So you want to think about that. And then again, be transparent. Okay, guys, tomorrow morning we're going to talk about design. So what we'll do is I'll give you an example, um, and we'll just try to talk it through. I want you guys to ask questions. Um, I'll talk about the example and then any other um, experience that we might be able to draw upon that might be more relevant for the specific type of program that you're evaluating. Um, and then if we have some time, we'll try to work in more on this kind of exercise where we start to think about what kinds of questions you need to ask for each of the different ingredients, and then where you might find those data or if you have to collect them independently. Um, so that'll be our tomorrow morning session. Um, so come with your thinking caps on about your ingredients and about your studies and the different types of data collection activities that you're currently doing and where you might find some of these data so it's truly not the case. So if you're running a randomized control trial, it's not the case that by adding a cost study, you're now suddenly expanding the footprint of the research requirement. Because you're already likely observing. You're already likely interviewing people. You're already likely doing a survey. All of those data can be helpful for you in your cost study. But you just have to have that lens, that resource lens. So that's what I would like for you guys to think about tonight, please. Um, and that's it.